actually recall when I first got there and getting my first call out, I kind of said to myself, all right, Holly, this is war, game on. We could honestly get into a firefight over the top of their heads and they would, they would lie in the field or in a ditch uh, while it occurred. And once we were done, they'd get up and keep farming. And, and no, nobody should be that used to war. Their rounds were hitting the bonnet, they were hitting the bull bar, so right near to where I was. And I remember thinking to myself, I've been hitting the body, but I'm still OK. I think I'm all right. But if I get hit in the head, then I'm gone. For me, the way we fought, not only as individuals, but as a team on that day, is what I'm most proud of. You know, one American was killed, lots of Americans were getting wounded, the Afghans were getting wounded, the Aussies were getting wounded. I mean, that, that alone says to me two things. There's a lot of bullets flying around in the air and there was a lot of people shooting at us. You can't go over there and, and do it half-heartedly. It has to be 100% committed or not at all. And when you say goodbye to your family, you have to assume that that's it. You're never going to see them again. Yeah, it always came to me that, you know, this is my job, this is what I have to do. If I don't clear that route or, you know, disarm that ID or, or bypass that ID, then someone's going to get killed. I grabbed his hand and I said, stay with me. I said, stay with me, Jonesy. You read about it in books and you see it in TV shows and on movies where someone opens the door and there are men and women there in uniform, but to actually have it happen, I, I can't even put it into words. You look at the calibre of soldier that, that we were losing and these were outstanding soldiers. These, it, it, this had nothing to do with good soldier, bad soldier. This was, was, was largely to do with lucky soldier, unlucky soldier. There's a sense of almost culture shock when you first arrive there. Um, and everything about it feels different. Just the dust feels different in Afghanistan to the dust in Australia. To keep the freezers fairly full with, um, with meat and frozen veggies and things like that. So when we, when we do run out or don't get, an, um, don't get a ration break for a week or two, I've got enough in reserve that I can um, carry it through. He has performed a critical role. Bomb disposal experts were drawn from all the services. You are ultra cautious. You know that everything's a risk. Every vulnerable point's a risk. You get the spider senses tingling, that sick feeling in your gut. There's something coming up that, you know, this just doesn't look right. You don't have time to think about anything else. All you're concerned about is getting the job done safely, efficiently, and looking after your team. Look like a person or may look like a vehicle. The modern kit, you can, you can see almost down to the type of vehicle or if someone's carrying something. Most flights that we embarked upon, both into Iraq and Afghanistan, we took ground fire, generally small arms, and it was always someone in a white ute pulled up on the side of the road and uh, you would see muzzle flashes. The Air Force, especially in the, in the transport world with the C-130s and our C-17s provide a critical role in supporting the ground forces letting them know where fire is coming from, providing them with safe passage. ...as a force and destroy us in detail. And what that looks like is soldiers, commandos in this instance, fire and moving in small teams, disappearing as enemy machine guns fire directly at them, being uncertain in my line as to their fate, then crawl out of that in ones and twos, uh, kill the insurgents in that pit and then move on to the next task. We were sneaking through the corn. The corn fields were probably just above head height. The corn was quite thick and they were behind a, a mud wall, so it was quite difficult to bring accurate fire onto them, but... Uh...